Would you like him to do anything, Hideo? No. <laughs> <laughs> This week in game news, Hideo Kojima received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the DICE Summit, Republic received a PlayStation 4 release date of March 25, 2016, the Sweden-based Mind Maze has raised $100 million in funding for Mind Leap, a virtual reality system that employs neuroscience, we are a step closer to Sword Art Online, Chris Schlerf, lead writer on Mass Effect Andromeda, has left Bioware for Bungie, and we have a new teaser for the upcoming RTS, Iron Marines. This is the Black Man and Robin Game News Update. First off, during the annual DICE Summit, which is a meeting of the minds for the video game industry, put on by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences in Las Vegas, there were some fascinating talks held. Perhaps the one that got people most excited was that between Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima. In case you've heard of neither person, Guillermo del Toro is the celebrated director behind Pan's Labyrinth, Pacific Rim, and other films. Hideo Kojima is the man behind the Metal Gear series of games. Kojima was recently fired from Konami, the company that published the Metal Gear series, Konami had given Kojima several months of difficulty, but that's a discussion for another time. During their discussion, Del Toro said in words that I shan't be repeating on television that it's the people with the money who cause trouble in the industry, and he also advised artists not to self-censor, and to be true to their visions. In case you're wondering why Del Toro, a filmmaker, was there, he was working with Kojima on horror game Silent Hills, that is, was, until Konami unceremoniously axed the project. In spite of the trouble, Del Toro would like to work again with Kojima at some point in the future, but he is a little concerned that there may be trouble. Kojima, you know what happened? Next game we're gonna do, his f***ing teeth are gonna fall out. It was an interesting panel presented during the second day, and it's well worth a watch. It provides some surprising insights into the heads of both creators, and how their works, both of film and in games, have influenced one another. Just be warned, however, there is some coarse language. The 19th annual DICE Awards were held during the summit. Besides Kojima's induction into the Hall of Fame, Satoru Iwata was posthumously honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Iwata was the previous president of Nintendo, and he'd done big things both for the company and the game industry. Fallout 4 won Game of the Year and Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, while Outstanding Achievement in Game Design went to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. As part of their 20th anniversary celebration for the Pokemon franchise, the current Splatfest in Splatoon is Pokemon Red vs. Blue themed. Somebody who probably isn't celebrating the wonderfully profitable Pokemon franchise this weekend, however, is Braxton Burks, owner of what is, or at least what was, the Pokemon Reorchestrated channel on YouTube. This week, the Pokemon company issued a copyright-based takedown against the channel that hosted official remixes of music from the Pokemon franchise. Braxton Burks had licensed the tracks and paid royalties, but alas, Archaic licensing stands in between him and sharing his music with the world, seeing as his licensing agreement didn't allow him to distribute the music on YouTube. So while his remixes are on iTunes, don't expect them to return to YouTube anytime soon. Personally, I'm disappointed but not surprised. Nintendo has, time and again, proven that it simply doesn't understand the online landscape. YouTube is an extremely important place for people who remix music. Not only is it an important platform for videos, but it's a place where music gets attention. Many a remixer has found an audience on YouTube, and it would seem that the Pokemon Company has shot itself, and Mr. Braxton Burks, in the foot. After all, Mr. Burks was paying royalties on these officially licensed tracks. YouTube helped his sales. Hopefully, these songs will be restored to YouTube, but I'd not bet on it. There have been a lot of game releases this week. To start with, the hotly anticipated Street Fighter V came out on the PlayStation 4 and PC. The latest installment in the beloved fighting game franchise boasts cross-platform play between PlayStation 4 and PC. Unfortunately, it's also sorely lacking in other content. 
While its 16 playable characters are, from what I've heard, well balanced, and the gameplay's good, there's just not enough to do. There's no arcade mode, shoddy presentation that doesn't give players enough information about what they're doing, and the single player is, on the whole, quite weak. There are also some miscellaneous glitches, and to top it all off, the game's netcode has issues. Meaning that if you play against somebody with a bad connection, you're going to run into trouble. This is the sort of thing we've come to expect with big game launches. If you didn't pre-order, you're not missing much. You're best off waiting for Capcom to actually finish Street Fighter V. I don't know why they'd release the game in this condition. They'd have been much better off releasing it into some sort of early access extended beta. To have it the way it is now as their grand opening is an embarrassment. If you want to fight your friends and don't feel like dealing with glitchy netcode, you might want to check out Wondershot, a multiplayer party game that was released on Steam this week for Windows. I haven't heard anything about Wondershot besides that which I've read about in the press release. At the time of production, nobody's reviewed this brand spanking new top-down platformer on Steam, which is a pity because it looks like some real fun. The thing about Wondershot is that you have one shot, and one life, to survive in a dangerous, shifting arena. The last player alive wins the round. Besides local PvP, Wondershot has local co-op and a solo challenge mode. Fan of the Tron franchise? Have you been longing for the grid? Do you fight for the users? Good news. Tron Runner was released on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 this week. It also left early access on Steam for a full release on PC. Set in the neon world of Tron, it's a game in which you're running through the grid. There are obstacles and enemies, and while I've not yet played the game, I have heard good things about it. It certainly looks slick. Do you have simple desires? Perhaps you'd like to run... mindlessly? Well, we've got you covered. Mindless Running came to Steam this week, and it's a game in which you are mindlessly running. In spite of the absurd name and premise, it's gotten good reception from players thus far. It's a simple runner with a silly sense of humor, and it's available on Windows for less than a dollar. If you seek simplicity, but you're looking for more of a brain teaser, Flip was released on Steam this week, and it might be up your alley. It's got a very basic concept with very good execution. Flip pieces of a puzzle to put them in the right order, use as few moves as possible. Thus far, Flip has gotten good reception from both players and the press. It's available for Windows. If you're a 3DS owner fond of RPGs, two different versions of Fire Emblem Fates have been released. The latest entry in the beloved tactical RPG series has three different storylines, in both the Birthright and Conquest versions of the game. Two kingdoms are on the brink of war, and you play as the heir of Hoshido. The thing is, you were raised by Norian royals. You're the kid of one side, but you've been raised by the other. In Birthright, you go to battle against the corrupt King of Nor, siding with your true family, whereas in Conquest, you're fighting to change Nor from within, aligning yourself against your true family. Thus far, both versions of the game have gotten great reviews, so whichever side you choose, you'll likely enjoy the game. There's also a third version of the game that's coming on March 10th as DLC, called Fire Emblem Fates Revelation, which is an alternative path, one in which you choose neither Nor nor Hoshido. That's a little bit confusing to say, isn't it? There's still no word on a European release date for Fire Emblem Fates. Also worth mentioning is that some content has been cut from the North American release of the game. Besides a certain minigame that might have bumped up the rating, there are reports coming in that some dialogue has been changed, 
and some characters are completely different. There's a lot to talk about around the issue with regard to the ideas of self-censorship, what should be changed for localization, and what should be kept intact. However, that's a discussion for another day. That said, if you have something that you would like to say about the topic, share it with us on our Twitter at Blackman and Robin. We'd be happy to share your thoughts on next week's episode. A game I've spoken about many times before, and shall continue speaking about, just got a new release. Rocket League, which is already out on PlayStation 4 and PC, came to the Xbox One this week. The game combines football, and soccer as it's called here in the United States, and acrobatic rocket-powered cars. It's a highly unusual blend of elements, and it works incredibly well. As I've stated before, I don't care about sports games, but Rocket League combines two elements I'm lukewarm on into a delicious substance that I can't get enough of. Right now, the Xbox One version of the game lags a bit behind the PS4 and PC versions of Rocket League due to Microsoft's rigorous certification process. According to Psyonix, the Xbox One version will be fully aligned with the other two versions of the game content-wise in April. Keep in mind, Rocket League has a lot of content, both paid cosmetic DLC as well as free maps, modes, and other things. Still, the Xbox One version of Rocket League is a finished game unlike a certain other big release this week. It's worth picking up if you enjoy fun. During the DICE Awards, Rocket League took home three awards. Sports Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Online Gameplay, and the DICE Sprite Award, which is for making a fantastic and successful game on limited resources. If you'd rather have Adventure at Sea, Pixel Piracy was released on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 this week. Developed by Relogic, the folks behind the 2D sandbox game Terraria, Pixel Piracy is an open-world piracy platformer. You play as a pirate in charge of your rough sailing crew of scallywags, plundering the high seas for treasure. Guys, be honest, was that a good pirate accent? I don't know. What I do know, however, is that earlier in the game's life, during its PC launch, it had some issues with its end game. Issues which have since been fixed thanks to some patches. Having played a bit of it on PC, I must say that it is pretty fun. You have to manage your pirates as you run around marauding, harassing turtles, and trying not to get murdered by rival pirate crews. Still, don't go in expecting Terraria. In spite of being from Relogic, it's a very different sort of game. If you play Cities Skylines, you may have heard about the Snowfall expansion, which was released this week on Mac, Windows, and Linux. For $13, you get a special map pack that brings, as you may guess, snow. It becomes necessary to worry about keeping the people in your city warm, and to contemplate the other issues that having cold weather brings. The paid expansion comes with some cool new buildings and the actual snow, whereas the free update that hit the game this week brings fog, rain, and other weather effects. I confess I've not yet tried out Snowfall, and I have to try out the update, but I have heard great things about it. As a big fan of City Skylines, I can recommend the base game. It has a great community, and gets good support from its devs. If you're into city building, check it out. dreams where you're wearing nothing but your underwear? Well, now your dreams come true in Super Flippin' Phones. There's a chance that you're looking for a weird game. If that's the case, Super Flippin' Phones is for you. Out on Steam and itch.io this week for Windows, it's a platformer in which you run through a mall, flipping phones out of people's hands. It's weird. I've played some of it and can confirm its overall weirdness, when you flip phones, people get angry and you'll be chased by a mob of phoneless mall goers, and eventually the mall cops show up and they're much harder to flip. You save people by leading them to a cardboard box in the middle of the mall. It's bizarre, challenging, but surprisingly fun. 
check out Super Flippin' Phones if you get the opportunity. It's fun for the fam or room of people that you tolerate. In other news, Nintendo of America unveiled the remodeled New York store this week. In this picture from left to right are Mario, Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, Doug Bowser, Nintendo's VP of Sales, Scott Moffat, the Executive VP of Sales and Marketing, Rick Leslie, Vice President of the Supply Chain Group, and Luigi. I've gone to the store, albeit several years ago, and must say that it's a really cool place. If you're a Nintendo fan living in New York, you absolutely must check out the Nintendo store. It's in the Rockefeller Plaza. In crowdfunding news this week, I came across a game called Need to Know on Kickstarter, and it looks absolutely fascinating. In the game, you play as an employee of the Department of Liberty, a fictional government agency based on the United States' NSA. You're granted the ability to use digital mass surveillance. You can read emails, text messages, and other data sent between citizens in order to look for threats. The game is currently in development for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and personally, I love the concept of it. Based on the trailer, it looks a bit like a version of Papers, Please, albeit with a lot more to do. While Papers was set in a pseudo-Soviet state a long time ago, and was about deciding who could cross into the border of Gloria Sostoska, this game is about deciding whose life you could potentially ruin with nothing more than a bit of information. We'll be watching Need to Know. If it sounds like your sort of game, be sure to check it out on Kickstarter. Need to Know is on track to be released December of 2016. There's a new Kickstarter up for a project called Essence. It's a surreal first-person adventure game in development by One Vision Games. It's a world filled with puzzles to solve and strange places to explore. Your goal is to link together worlds and figure out who you are and what your true purpose is. There was a previous Kickstarter campaign for Essence, but it didn't reach its goal. Fortunately, it looks as though this one will make it. If you get the opportunity, check out our interview with Tim Bachman, one of the developers on the game. You can find a convenient link to that and the Kickstarter for Essence at blackmanandrobin.com. A very unusual open-world game almost passed me by this week. A Place for the Unwilling is a sandbox adventure set in a shadowy, mysterious city. There's plenty to do in the city, and you go about your everyday life, working, making money, reading the paper, all while strange happenings occur around you. The game draws inspiration from Majora's Mask, the works of H.P. Lovecraft, as well as Sunless Sea, which, incidentally, is another game inspired by the works of Lovecraft. A Place for the Unwilling is set to be released April of 2017 for Mac and Windows. If the developers hit their 30,000 euro stretch goal, it'll also come to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Who have never been born, the streets which have yet to be built accumulate in every corner of the room. But with your support, we could craft an adventure like no other. If you share our vision and want to be part of it, go on, support us, and spread the word. Will you enter the city? A new trailer's out for the upcoming Battlezone 98 Redo, a remake of the classic sci-fi RTS. Set in an alternate version of the 1960s, in which the United States and the Soviet Union have gone to space and are fighting over a material known as biometal, it's a real-time strategy game that employs first-person tank combat. First-person tank combat was a selling point of the original Battlezone. In fact, the Battlezone name was initially just licensed from Atari for an interesting real-time strategy game. Though it's not a traditional Battlezone game, it is one that got fantastic reception. How well has the game aged? I don't know for certain. Hopefully this remake, which boasts improved visuals and Steam Workshop support, 
turns out as well when it's released this spring. For adventure game fans, a new trailer has been released for the next point-and-click adventure from Watch at Eye Games, Shardlight. Shardlight is a post-apocalyptic game set in a world ravaged by disease. It's a world in which oppression, inequality, and corruption run rampant. In Shardlight, you play as a woman named Amy, and you've discovered a dark secret that's being hidden by the government. I've played a preview build of Shardlight and must say that the story and world are fascinating. I can't say too much because I'd hate to spoil the game, but I do feel safe saying that Shardlight has an unusually whimsical sense of humor for a game that is overall both grounded and dark. While much of the game is sad, it's not overwhelmingly sad. From what I've seen thus far in Shardlight, the writing of the game is quite strong, and I can't wait to review the full thing once it's released. Let it happen again. This is why we have to act. They've been beating us down for so long, nobody remembers a time when they were prosperous and free. Death is coming for us all. We must embrace it rather than fear it. Finally, we have a new trailer for The Flame in the Flood. This post-apocalyptic roguelite adventure is coming out on February 24th for the Xbox One, Windows, and Mac. It's a gorgeous survival game about you and your dog, and it has a great soundtrack by Chuck Reagan. Well, that's it for this week's game news. For all the latest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews, be sure to follow at Blackman and Robin on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own views, and be sure to visit our website, blackmanandrobin.com, for convenient links to all the cool things from today's episode.